The topic for today is the Mexican-American War. In this video, we'll be looking at how the United States achieves manifest destiny and controls all the land between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So last week we looked at Texas and how the Republic of Texas gained its independence from Mexico. And Texas is still an issue in the Mexican-American War. Texas uh, wants to join the United States and eventually does in the mid 1840s, and Mexico becomes very mad at the United States for adding Texas. Remember, there's lots of disputed area in Texas, and that Mexico actually doesn't even recognize Texas as leaving and being its own country. So in a way, Mexico believes that the United States added part of its country to the United States, which would be bad if you were Mexico. President Polk offers Mexico some cash to settle this, this dispute. Mexico, of course, refuses. It's kind of insulted that the United States is trying to buy them off, and this causes more anger. And just so we can look at this map again one more time, remember, this is the disputed area here between Mexico and Texas, and Mexico doesn't even really believe that Texas should be its independent country. They still believe it should be part of Mexico. So moving along, President Polk really wants to add some more territory to the country. He was the president that settled the Oregon dispute with Britain. He's sort of a manifest destiny president. So he wants to figure out a way to add parts of Mexico to the United States. In order to do this, he needs to wage a war against Mexico, but it really looks bad if you start a war um, for no real reason. So President Polk decides he's going to try and figure out a way to get Mexico to attack us, and then we can declare war on them. So what he does is he, he sends troops to that disputed area, um, that orange part that we looked at in this last slide here, right here. So he puts his troops like right down there, um, which Mexico believes is in its territory. And then, as he anticipated, Mexico attacks those troops since... They are not in the United States, technically. And then Polk comes back and says, hey, they attacked us. Let's go to war. And Congress gives him a, a declaration of war. So it's almost like the United States was poking Mexico, like this dog poking this cat. And the cat kind of raged back at him. Anyway, um, so Mexico and the United States are officially at war. California was part of Mexico back then. But many U.S. citizens were living there. So they sort of join in in the war on the, United, on the side of the United States. And they rebel against the Mexican government. This is awesome for the United States. It helps them out because now you have a rebel army out in California attacking Mexico while the United States army is attacking Mexico from the east. Um, the famous rebellion in California was led by a man named John C. Fremont. And this was their flag here that becomes the grizzly bear flag that becomes a very famous symbol of their rebellion. You'll see, still see it out in California some places. So Fremont and the others in the rebellion kind of take over California. They take San Francisco, they take other big cities in California. So Mexico is dealing with them. At the same time, the United States Army is going into Arizona, New Mexico, and taking over all this territory. It's going pretty well for the United States thanks to that California rebellion led by Fremont. Because of the success out in California and in, in New Mexico and Arizona, eventually the United States invades what is now Mexico, it goes into the heart of Mexico. That is led by Generals Zachary Taylor and Winfield Scott. They're the two main generals. They lead the United States Army into the heart of Mexico. They win a couple of major battles at Monterey and Buena Vista. Um, the United States Army at this point in time is just better equipped, better trained. They don't have the numbers that the Mexican Army has, but they just kind of roll over them without much of a, without much of a contest. The war ends in a U.S. victory at an awesomely named place called Chapultepec. I love saying that. It's right near Mexico City, so the United States Army basically takes the Mexican capital. And the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed in 1848. That ended the war, and it gave the United States this territory known as the Mexican Cession, which completes the rest of the country, pretty much. Um, there's one little final piece that's added in a purchase in 1853, so let's look at that map real quick. Um, we'll, we'll look at it in a second. So there is some people that are against this war. It wasn't even though it was very successful for the United States. People in the North would call it Mr. Polk's War. Here's a, even a book title that says Mr. Polk's War, the conflict no one wanted. So that's historians writing about people that didn't want the war. The main criticism was the way the war was started. Many believed that Mexico was innocent and war wasn't needed. One person that spoke out against this war was a guy named Abraham Lincoln. You may have heard of, against, uh, heard of him. He spoke out against the war. So there's people in the North that didn't like the war and that kind of the United States was acting aggressively. But most people liked it, especially in the West and the South. So here's the map I was talking about before, Achieving Manifest Destiny. We looked at, um, you know, this, is, this was the area added after Texas was added to the country. 
and then this last part in purple here, that was the territory that the United States gained from the war against Mexico in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848. Then in 1853, they purchased this blue part down here, this last little sliver from Mexico in what was called the Gadsden Purchase. So by 1848, and I guess technically 1853, you have the country as it is, all complete. So in conclusion, just kind of recap, at first Mexico was very mad at the United States about adding Texas, and there was that border dispute issue that was really pretty touch and go there for a while. President Polk, in an effort to gain more territory, provokes Mexico into a war so that the U.S. can expand. Once the Mexicans attack us, we can attack them, so it's kind of like a trick. Key victories in California, thanks to the Fremont rebels, along with key victories in Mexico, lead to a relatively easy United States victory. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo gives U.S. a big chunk of Mexican territory, 